So uh, just went and got some sushi, doing this thing now, trying to, you know, support the local businesses. Um, also using precautions, wearing the gloves and the thing everywhere. Anyways, want to take this moment while I have some quiet and just me to talk about uh, something that happened this morning. We were on our bi-weekly chat with um, all of Chrome UX globally. So it's an hour meeting that we have for updates and then for sharing work and whatnot. And one of the things that um, our director, Alex, was saying really stuck with me this morning and related to what I wanted to make this week's video about. He was mentioning this notion of diverge and converge. Um, this is something that's often talked about a lot with Jake Knapp in the context of the sprint methodology, um, Google Google Venture Sprinting. The diverge and converge um, concept is not anything new for design and this idea of exploring and then agreeing or, or resolving to a solution, but it's been made most popular, I think, in recent past by Jake Knapp and the Google Ventures team with sprinting and that whole methodology. If that's new to you or this is the first time you're hearing about that, um, I'll put some links below. I recommend you look into it. It's a process and, and a format um, um, for design thinking that we've used at Google. So my director, Alex, was talking about how that concept diverge and converge is usually something we discuss in the early stages of, of finding a solution. But he was referring to that same concept and rhythm in the context of using a design system in the sense that we have defined a system, we have a lot of existing products in Chrome, and in product, we have the need to like converge on a system that is constrained um, for a good reason for components and for scalability and for resourcing and all these things. But also as we're converging on a design system and making sure we're consistent and having all of these, um, it's also important to innovate and diverge from that design system and to explore things that aren't in the design system. And I think that that concept is, is something that I've, I haven't thought about and something I'm actually encountering right now where we have um, we've redesigned the browser a couple years ago um, and updated the UI, and we've had documentation and resources there. So we've gotten to the point where we've had a design system and we've had some convergence as far as of what our design system and sticker sheets are in desktop, but then also we've had some divergence and exploration and evolution as we've shipped new features. The result of that is that a lot of our documentation resources are kind of out of step with each other, whether they're in the wrong format or they might be out of date to what's in implementation today. So one of my tasks this week is trying to clean up some of those resources for a team and so I'm gonna walk through that with you today but I need to get home get this food to the family and then jump back in okay so like I was saying um, this idea of diverging and converging. We have a design system, obviously, um, in desktop Chrome, and I've talked about it in the past a little bit about how we use material design and then also Chrome's UI language to adapt to different OSs, whether that's to Windows or Chrome OS um, or Mac OS. Okay, so what I've got here is basically what we've imported from our sketch template initially, and um, I've been using Figma now for uh, the last three months, really since the beginning of the year. I've been using Figma for our new projects, but haven't really dug into the complexity of a design system. So I wanted to document a multi-time-lapse kind of me working this out. Really, a lot of the shapes and the metrics are right here. I just need to kind of redraw, polish, update fonts and icons, symbolize everything, and then make sure that they can work within the shared library to work within Figma for the whole team. So I'm gonna see how far I get here. Um, I might pop in, share some insights, and then um, hopefully have some reflections and once this is done, ideally can make this somewhat of a series of kind of designing the browser in the browser. I like the idea of being able to use um, a very rich, progressive web application to design um, the browser kind of in browser technology. Um, it's kind of a meta thing, but also a fun idea that um, the UX team at Chrome has been talking about and something that I wanted to make uh, a video about. So, so my three main goals um, to get done in the sticker sheet is one, kind of organize, get rid of all the artifacts that didn't come over in the import. Two, I want to kind of confirm all the OS specific specs. So like how Windows and Mac OS and Chrome OS currently have their window controls and all of those styles, making sure that those things are on par um, with our design system library. And then lastly, there's um, some typography issues and also iconography issues that I need to polish and fix, either that are out of date from when the sticker sheet was designed in the last couple of years and or things that have been implemented as of like new features and things. The third thing I want to do is make these like nice scalable uh, symbols so that you can just like drag a window frame in, pull it, select an image and start um, designing on top of it. Working on that resource, I will share what I can and um, hopefully this is useful.
So I was about to jump into that file, but it's getting, yeah, it's getting to the end of the day. Um, one of the things that's been breaking up my day um, with this new schedule of like working somewhat in the, in the like late mornings, early afternoon, and then taking a break, and then working later in the evening. I'm gonna go spend some time with the family, eat dinner. Um, it's actually raining today, which I love, but we're gonna be inside, so I'm gonna do a movie, have some dinner, and then um, jump back on the computer and do some Figma. Okay, so it's like <laughs> two days later now. To say the least, it's been pretty hard to get work done. I've been able to get into like my meetings and then also help around the house. Um, what I've been lacking is some like heads down focus time. And that's what I needed to do here. Um, need to get some time in Figma, just like heads down pushing pixels. So I don't intend on finishing this entire file tonight, but I wanted to finish a couple things and get them cleaned up. That's the goal I'm gonna get working here and um, I'll pipe in when I need to. So preface, this is not me teaching Figma. This is me actually learning the proper way to use Figma. Obviously I'm a little behind the curve here as far as people building design sticker sheets um, and design systems in Figma. But since using this beginning of the year, I've been really loving the tool, but, but haven't gotten into the nitty gritty of, or the methodology of how to structure symbols, um, how they're nested, what the, how the overrides work. Kind of like fumbling through that live with you all. So hopefully can provide some reflections. If you all are experts, which I'm sure a lot of you are, glad to get um, feedback from you too. So the whole main um, window tab bar cross platform is the same color in Chrome. Actual window styling, as far as like the actual window controls, the radius, the shadow, the line style, those things um, are specific per platform. This specific symbol was just that background color and the actual constraints for the top, bottom, left and right sides um, were just off with the mask. Um, a simple fix and now we have, we have our Chrome desktop windows for Mac. We have Chrome desktop windows for Windows, windows for Windows and then our Chrome windows for Chrome OS. Um, so I'm going to fix these other things. You can see here, all of these, I think are using San Francisco typeface across different platforms. So I need to update that to match. Um, and then all of these things are looking pretty solid as far as the design details. I just need to go in and verify and then symbolize everything correctly and uh, we'll be in business. Yeah, let's do that. So what I did is um, in this in this file, uh, I had an import from Sketch already, like I discussed. But a lot of these symbols were messed up. So I've really gone in here. Everything here is masked correctly with the right radiuses, the right shadows per OS, and then is also symbolized. So we have a new tab variant. We also have um, a variant with one active tab and two inactive tabs. As you can see here, these things all work. Um, going down to Windows, you see same thing, um, different type, different window controls um, for both one tab and three tabs. And then lastly, we have Chrome OS, which is very similar to Windows, but different window controls again. 
Um, this is just like real details. I'm getting into the specifics of like the radius of the window per platform. These are really small things that aren't the biggest deal for engineering and implementation because those things are all based in the technical environment. But it's nice to have them pixel perfect and make sure they resemble the OS and the aesthetic of the UI. So yeah, these are all working great. Um, I'm excited to hand these off to the other designers and see what they think. Also, so these aren't active like frames for um, mocking and whatnot, but they're different um, grab and go like sticker sheet states for different tabs. These are all symbolized as well for active and inactive whatnot. But I have um, kind of our default tab and it's active and inactive state. There's also some like active media or uh, video control um, indicators that we show in tab. Um, we have pin tabs for active and inactive. Um, and then here you're also seeing something that you might not have seen yet. This is uh, tab groups. So tab groups is a feature that we've been working on for a while um, in the Chrome team, but it is now out and uh, a version of it is in stable. Um, there's a lot more to come to this feature and excited to work on it. Getting some of those things mocked up and in our sticker sheet. Yeah, getting excited. This isn't a good stable point. I still want to do dark mode, incognito, lots of other things. Um, I might actually tackle some of that on a Windows machine just to get in um, the real context of designing in a browser across platform. Uh, so maybe a video about that. Let me know if that sounds interesting. I'm gonna wrap this one up. I've got lots of other stuff to do. Uh, leave any ideas or questions or thoughts in the comments. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.